Hello and thank you for clicking on this tutorial. This is Shelly from Koala Knits and Knacks and I'm going to show you how to make this big beautiful jellyfish. I'm calling them Jiggly the Jellyfish. <laughs> Made on my 40 needle central machine. I used Karen Blossom Cakes in the colorway Radiant Rainbow. You're going to need some pipe cleaners, some fiber fill, um, a crochet hook. I used um, a 4.25 millimeter crochet hook but you could use your favorite one. Um, anyone in that uh, size range will, will do. Okay, and um, yeah, once you get your, your materials, let's get going. I'm excited about this project because when I was more into crochet before I got my knitting machines, um, I crocheted a lot of jellyfish. And so I'm jumping on that bandwagon and I'm going to use my Central 40. So let's um, bring our needles in line our last white and our first black now you're probably saying that's not really matching up with the numbers because it's not i can't read those numbers anyway so <laughs> i'm just making it my own um i like to have the black one as the first one i just uh, that's just how i like visually to see it so i just mark that um divider between the last white and the first black uh with a permanent black marker and then i always know that it's coming around okay so we are going to um we're going to do a long tail cast on so behind that first black needle with your yarn and in front of the next, behind and in front, all the way around. This is so cute. I've made one already and uh, I had fun figuring this pattern out and I thought, man, I can't wait to show it to you. So I hope that you love it too. Okay, so if you don't have the 40 needle central, make it on your 46 um, Addy or whatever you have. Just you know, the one that's closest in needle amount. And you might have to adjust the numbers a bit, but you can, um, of rows, but you can just uh, figure it out that way. But let's set our counter. So I've got my Susan Bates counter that's attached to the side of my machine. I'm going to use my, um, my uh, tensioner, which up until recently I have not used because I always like to hold it in my, in my hands, um, in between my fingers. But um, I, with this tensioner having to be on the side here, um, I'm finding that if I use the middle tensioner uh, for my yarn, it's perfect for this weight of yarn. And then I've got my hand free to just click this every time it goes around whenever I see that black divider coming around. So that's a great tip for you to make, like, make sure you mark it because it really does make a difference, okay? And I'm going to just knit. I'm going to click that on one because I'm on row one. And we're going to just knit. Just casually, see, I click it and it's just so easy to have that attached to my machine just like that. And three, and I'm gonna knit until I get 50 rows, okay, for my head. So you go ahead, um, attach your yarn with a long tail cast on and knit 50 rows. And then when you get to your 50th row and you finish it, see me back. All right, so I finished my 50 rows. I'm gonna cut off a long tail to remove my project, take it out of my tensioner, out of the yarn um, guide there, and in between that last white and the first black. Okay, then we're gonna thread our needle. We're gonna do a long tail cast off, okay? So crank your handle, then take one off. I'm using my Addy needles because I find they, um, with that little curve up, it's just the nice width to get underneath these needles. So these these little teeth on, on the centros are a little bit closer together than on the Addy. And so I find that um, that my needles that I, my wool needles that I use, those metal ones, are harder to use with this machine. They don't fit very well. So this is the needle that I choose to use. So we're gonna go around. We're gonna take our work off just like this. Taking one off at a time. And even this needle isn't the greatest, okay? So then we're going to make another one exactly like this, okay? Now, this is such great yarn to use in, in your machine because it's the first time that I bought this yarn. It, again, it's called, what is it called actually? Um, let me see. It's called Karen Blossom Cakes. I'm gonna put that in there, Blossom Cakes. And it is, when you're tying knots at the end and stuff, you gotta be very, very careful because it breaks very easily. Um, and that part is a little bit, um, you know, I like it when it's a little bit stronger, but I just, uh, 
I'll show you when I close off, I go around twice instead of, you know, just the one time, but, but still when it, when you're knitting with this in your machine, it just goes like a dream. And we all love yarn that works like a dream in our machine. So, um, the little extra caution that it takes to sew it up in the end is totally worth it in my opinion. So, um, if you haven't tried this yarn, go ahead and, uh, and get some and see. Somebody told me that in a comment that I should be, uh, <laughs> I should be a representative for Karen Cakes. Um, they should send me some free stuff because I um, I use their stuff all the time. I love Karen Cakes. So <laughs> if you're listening, Karen Cake guys, send me some yarn. <laughs> Anyways, no, it's all good. So this is uh, almost done here. Once you get it off, you're going to make another panel exactly like it. So you're going to do a long tail cast on and you're going to knit up. 40 rows okay that's for the base you're going to knit up 40 rows and then you're going to remove it just as we remove this one and then when you get it off of course that's how it looks when you take it off the machine but then when you give it a stretch widthwise and lengthwise look how beautiful that is like look at the difference for those of you who are new to them to the knitting machine world look at the difference that's when you stretch it out and that's when you don't. So you have to always stretch out your work. It softens up your stitches, lines them up into their row, nice neat little rows. Um, if your tension was a little bit um, different in places, then um, it just fixes that for you. So there we go. Look how beautiful that panel is. So this is our head. We're going to go ahead and make another one with 40 rows. And when you're done that, see me back. All right, so these are our two pieces, and I love how the color is different in them because one's brighter and one's a little bit darker, but that's just how the ball um, landed when we were, how the color landed when we were um, doing it. So we're going to grab our larger panel, okay, and we're going to cinch the end. Now you have to choose which you want to be the top of the head and which you want to be um, the bottom of the head because the colors are different, okay? So in this one, I have the more of the brighter colors at the top. So I'm gonna choose this other side as my top, but we regardless, gonna close it the same way. And again, let me just remind you that this is uh, very easy to break. This yarn is very easy to break. <laughs> Sadly, um, I don't like that. So you can you can either grab yarn in a different uh, in a different you know from a different ball that uh, you prefer, and then close it up the same way, just using a stronger strand. Or you can just persevere and do it like this. So I am going to just go underneath those that top row of stitches. My favorite needles are those woolen needles, the metal needles that um, have the little plastic end on them. Those are the ones that I use all the time, but. But uh, the end on my small one broke. I had two of them and, and both ends from constant use broke. Um, the plastic parts do. Eventually they wear out, but they're not expensive. They're only like three ninety eight dollars or something for a set of three in Walmart. But the last time I was in Walmart, they were out of them. I think I've been buying them out. <laughs> they were out of them, so I wasn't able to get any. So um, next time I'm in the city, I will, I will check for them because I do prefer them. Okay, so I'm going to gently pull on that oh I'm just so scared to pull on it because literally it breaks out easily so the best thing to do is to just go around again go around pick up a couple stitches and then pull then go around just pick up a couple stitches and pull if you do a few at a time instead of the full circle then um, then it's less likely to break okay so there we go All right, so I'm happy with that end. So now we're going to reach in and we're going to pinch the top and we're going to bring it through. Just like we do a beanie, grab one of those ends um, that we have there. And then we're gonna close up this other end just around it, okay? So we're going to, now that that's cinched, making sure that that tail is out because you're going to um, have to tie this one off with it, okay? We're going to pull that through. And we're going to sew this one closed. I got a little loose loop there because I started sewing it closed and then I uh, I realized I didn't have that videotape, so I had to, to go back and undo it. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to close this end, taking just a few stitches at a time because then it's less likely to break. Okay, so three or four stitches and then give it a little tug until we get all the way around. Okay. 
going to get that little end out of the way and I'm going to gra grab that little loop that's there because I know it's not a loose stitch or anything but uh I mean it's not a, a an open stitch that's going to unravel but I'm going to grab it anyways okay so we're going to once we get to there There we go. Now I have to decide which, there we go, I've got it grabbed. Um, I have to decide which, uh, which color I want for my head. All right, so let me just tie this one more time. Now we're going to tie this off and then I'll show you what I mean, okay? So we wanna bring this other one that's on the middle up snug to the, to the top of this or inside of this one so that, um, there we go. Just so they're nice and snug and you can feel it as you're tying it, okay? Then you can cut this off and we can hide that too. But before we do that, um, we need to decide whether we want that to be our head or whether we want that to be our head. Vastly different. Okay, but the last one that I made has more of the brighter colors on the top. So I'm going to do the other side, actually. We're going to go this way. Now, it really doesn't much matter because I'm going to make a bunch of these because um, I'm in a craft sale. Uh, in May and I'm going to make a pile of these to sell because I really think they'd be they'll be good sellers but before we can go any further with this we need to attach our little our little loop that's like this okay so in order to do that we're going to grab a 4.25 millimeter crochet hook we're going to grab our our yarn um end and we're going to if you don't know how to do a single crochet a foundation chain and a single crochet look down on my videos um and you will uh, see a video so that will teach you how to do that because I'm not going to go really slow with this one because um, there's no time in a video to, to teach you every little stuff like that. So if you want to learn how to crochet, you go ahead and look that up and I'll show you how to do it. And it's very, very simple. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm going to do a chain of 20. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. And then um, I'm going to go into my second chain from the hook. So not this first one. You don't count the one on the hook. That's one and that's two. And I'm going to do a single crochet all the way down into every chain, okay? And that's how I'm going to get my little loop. Now, I did get an Addy egg last uh, week it came in, actually. And I did try this yarn in there. I thought if I did a, an, a cord um, that that would be also a, a nice you know, way to make a little loop there, but I tried and I tried and it just would not cooperate with me. It just would not work. It works with other yarn, but this is like a soft yarn and it splits quite, quite easily, I think. And so that's probably the reason why it wouldn't work. Um, but if you're using yarn that's different from this and you don't know how to crochet and you don't want to learn how to crochet, then there's other options for you. You can, um, make a cord or, or just, uh, you know, find a way to make a little loop for the top. But for, for me, I'm going to crochet them when I'm using this yarn anyways. Like I said, if I use a different yarn, I might try using the Addy Egg just for a different look, okay? All right, so I'm gonna crochet all the way to the bottom. Almost done here. Two more. And into this last one here. Gonna crochet. And then when I'm finishing off that one, I'm just going to pull it through just like that. Cut off an end and pull it through, okay? And that's how I'm going to make this little um, hanger. And then I'm going to just tie a little knot there. Don't even need to do two because we're going to sew it on. Now, there is a right and a wrong way to this. That's the correct way. You see those beautiful little stitches at the top there? Um, and if you turn it over, that's the, the wrong way, okay? And you see those, the way to tell is you can see these little, these little loops that go over. The stitch here that's the back of the stitch so um that's the wrong way and and that is important to know because when we um fold this together i don't want to fold it like that and have the wrong way showing although probably only you and me will know that um <laughs> well anybody who crochets and buys this will know it um but we're going to fold it so that the wrong sides are together then i'm going to put my needle back on and i'm going to to uh take this one end and i'm going to just sew this closed just like that okay once i have that sewn together i'm going to take the little loop I should hide these first so um, because I've determined that this is the outside of my hat I can go ahead and take these and uh, hide them into the inside just through the little center there okay pull those through okay and now they're out of the way but I'm going to 
actually I'll just use this little needle since it's in my hand. I'm going to thread the one side of this, making sure that the right side is showing. And I'm going to go through that center and into the inside. Okay, just like that. Then I'm going to take the other one, the other end that I had left there. Thread that one. And I'm going to do the same thing, except for I'm going to grab a couple pieces of strands of, of um, loops there, just so that, so that if I just went straight into the center, of course, the whole thing would pull through. So I need that little extra security there. Okay, and then I'm going to tie them off. Okay, now these are the other two that I put in, so I can just go ahead and tie those all together if I want because then I have a double strand that I'm tying and it's stronger and I'm probably not going to break it then okay and then I'm going to just cut this off just a little bit and we've got our hanging little loop on the top which is awesome okay, okay so um to stuff this we're going to need to fix the end here we're need to, going to need to have a pull string here so let's get it all nice and smoothed out so that it's even Okay, and then you're going to go underneath two stitches. You're going to thread your needle, of course, go underneath two stitches, then skip two and under two or three, however you feel comfortable doing, or just one. <laughs> There's no right or wrong. You can, I've just skipped one and picked up two and skipped one and picked up two. Um, you just want to go along the outside here. Let's get that out of the way. Go along the outside rim, just like this until you get to the end. Okay. or right around and that's how then we're going to stuff it and cinch it but we're not going to cinch it completely closed okay so let's get this done get all the way around get all the way around and then um come back and see me i'm almost there but i'll save some camera time by by um, shutting it off for a second all righty so we came around and we've got it uh cinched off just like that we've got the the drawstring all around it now we're going to grab our stuffing and we're gonna stuff the little head now you're gonna just pull these two these two strings just to cinch it a bit but we're not gonna see the secret with this head we don't want a round head we want an oval head oval round kind of head so we're not going to close this all the way we're going to tie it off about like that I can already close that off now and still add more if I want to but um, I want to leave it open about like that okay so not nearly not nearly tight at all okay and just like that then I can take those two and I can shove them in there tuck them in there cut them off if you want um, but I'm going to add just a little bit more grab it down here from beside me I'm going to grab stuff it in the in the sides there okay just to get it how I want it to be okay without it being just a round ball okay so that's I think let me see if I compare it to that other one I'm gonna put a little bit more in there it felt like it needed a bit more okay so there we go put that in there just like that maintaining the shape okay so I like to just smooth those down just into the into the nooks there so you get a nice little see that's that's perfect. That's beautiful. Just like that. Okay. Then you're going to set that aside. You're going to grab your other one, your other piece that's done. That's 40 rows. Okay. We're going to close it up just like we closed the other one. Okay. In a sense that once you get, once you get, um, well, almost like the other one, we're going to close this end, pick an end, any end, it doesn't matter. And you're going to you're going to close it off, tighten it up and close it just like we did um, on the other panel. And when you finish that, come back. All right. So I cinched that end. I put my yarn in through the middle there. I pinched that end and I'm bringing it through. And I'm going to close this end just the same way that we did before. Okay. So go ahead and reinforce that around once and then come back. <laughs> okay so essentially we have the same thing that we had before we've got we've got our little um piece that's like this but the difference is is that we're going to keep this one flat so we're going to bring the inside up close to the to this side again and we're going to tie this off i'm going to keep this long because um we're going to use it for oops just threw my needle flying across the floor there 
Oh, you're still attached. Good. Awesome. Okay. So then we've got that. Um, now I've got to determine which side I want to be showing. Okay. Because when we sew it on, it's going to look like that on the bottom. That's what it looks like on the top. So it's not a whole big color. You don't see a lot of color, but um, that's going to sit on there like this. Do I want the bright or do I want, I think I want I think I'm going, it doesn't actually matter, but I'm going to have that showing at the bottom, okay? No, I think I'm going to have this. doesn't matter. I'm going to just choose. However it gets put on is how it gets put on, okay? So now that we've got, um, we've got our piece like this, we are going to, I'm going to leave this one at the bottom. I'm going to poke that through to the other side, okay? Because I want to begin sewing from here, okay? I'm going to put my longer needle on this piece just like so and I'm going to because this is up through the center here already I'm going to take it up through the center of of my um, head and I'm going to bring it up through that little center where my um, handle is coming out okay this might be too too thick of a needle but there we go. I'm going to do that because I find that that just helps me put it in place. Okay. So now it's in place. It's centered um, all on the bottom there. And now I have to, all I have to do is sew. Okay. So I'm going to actually cut this off. I'm going to use that other end for sewing. And I'm going to, um, then later I'm going to just put this on my smaller needle and I'm going to just uh, tie it off and, and hide it. Okay. But I won't do that right now. I'll do that off camera just to save some time. So I'm going to put this, now I know that that's sitting in the center. I'm going to then take my needle and I'm going to thread this other end just like so. Okay. And then I'm going to just bring it up my seam in between those two layers until I get it to where I want it to be. Okay. Let me just see. So I want it to be about, let me just count, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, about eight needles down, just so I have a, a, a flap, just like that, okay? So I'm going to go up just a tiny bit more, and then I'm going to go through, and I'm going to grab the head of the jellyfish, and I'm going to make a stitch, okay? So that's just my guide as to now where I'm going to go. So if you fold that over, you'll see that this is where we're going to begin sewing, okay? All around the rim of this piece right here and attaching it to the head. So I'm going to go in, grab both layers. It's a lot easier than what it looks. I hope I hope that you see that this is not hard. Um, and that, by the way, I'm explaining it, that it, it comes across as easy to you because it's really not hard, okay? Um, but I'm folding this over because I want the same size of lip, so to speak, all the way around. Then I'm gonna go pick up a little piece through both layers and then I'm going to pick up a little bit one row there with the head okay and I'm going to do this all the way around okay you can follow the same row around the head um, or just you know even just eyeballing it it's just going to work out because you're not really moving you're not really moving anything you're staying in this same area here so um, as long as you've got the the lip of this turned up to the same thickness as you go around you you can't go wrong because you secured this in the middle it's all centered okay so then i'm going to pick up another little piece right here now we are going to make the the edges where we're going to sew sew them and make the points like you saw like um on the other one like this um and you essentially can do that before you put it on. I'm choosing not to because I think then then I get it, um, when I'm sewing it on like this, I'm I'm more accurate with getting it even um, all the way around. Okay. Um, I think it's best to just do it um, the way I'm doing it here. However, you know what, this is, I, I put out the pattern for you and if you have little tweaks that makes it easier for you, then by all means, you, um, you go ahead and do that. But we're going to continue around in a like manner, just like this, until we get all the way around and then we're going to secure it, okay? All right, so once you have it sewn all the way around, you should have a lip that's going around um, the whole head like that. It looks like that from the underside, okay? So you're going to now um, take your needle 
we're actually going to go in to the other side bring it up onto the bottom okay i just find it's easier to work that way okay and now we're going to start weaving in and out picking up both layers going up to the top oh did i go off camera here i'm going to take it out and do it again we're going to weave in and out going up to the top there we're going to fold this over we're going to catch a little stitch there just even one or two little um, stitches there nothing major then we're going to go back in and weave back down and we're going to pull on that just a little bit and you see how that made that little that little um, indent right there okay and it's attached okay so now we're going to do that and then I'm going to just go in like that under the stitches just to secure it just a bit okay then I'm going to go under and I'm going to go over to where I want to do my next one however far apart you want to do them okay and then I'm going to go up till I get to the top okay then I'm going to pick up just a couple stitches there a couple thicknesses and I'm going to come back down the opposite way or well the opposite but yeah uh, you know when you come up on this side of the of the um, rim then you go down on the other side okay just like that bring it down then I'm gonna pull till I make another little little um, petal so to speak okay then I'm going to trail it down just a little bit farther then wrap it around that stitch and then I'm going to go back over to where I think I'm going to put the next one I'm going to run out of yarn here so I'm going to have to attach another piece I'm going to go up up so that I'm at the very rim of that that stitch just like that okay I'm coming out on the underneath side so then I'm going to fold this over so I can pick up a stitch that's right in line with it and then I'm going to come over now and come back down till I get past where it was sewn okay then I'm going to pull on it then it's attached to my head um, it's not just forming these little um, pockets here but it's attached to the head um, which is uh, going to keep it secure okay so I'm going to just go ahead and put a little little slip knot in there to continue on every time you feel like you got to secure it a little bit more you go ahead and do it okay I'm going to go down come across and I'm not measuring I'm just doing whatever I feel looks right okay and I'm going to weave up okay I'm going from the top over that last stitch from face, like closest to me so then I'm going to smooth this out so that I'm grabbing the stitch that is right close to it and then oops now I'm running out of thread so once I get this one done I have to attach okay and then I'm going to go underneath and come back just like that I'm not going to make it quite as far because of and then I'm going to just pull on it ever so slightly I don't like how that looks because I went too far so I'm going to going to trail that back up underneath that stitch and then go down a little bit deeper and it's closer together okay just like so and I'm going to pull that through Okay, you can see what it's doing there. That's exactly what I want it to do. Now I'm going to tie this off. I'm going to do it twice. I'm going to go ahead and <laughs> it keeps falling off because it's so short. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hide that underneath. Just like that. I'm going to cut it off. And then I'm going to attach another piece. Um, I'll, I'll just attach it around here and hide the ends. And then I'll continue on all the way around. And then when you're done, all you got to do is play with these little um, little loops. And that's what it's going to look like around the rim. So you go ahead and finish that all the way around. And when you've got it all the way around, like these ones I did a little bit farther apart. So you can see what, it's, what the difference is here. I think I got seven of them on this one. Okay. And then this one, I did them a little bit closer together. So I'm going to get more than seven. So you just make it however you want to do it. And then um, when you're done, 
we're going to come back and we're going to make these awesome little tentacles using flat panels. Okay, so finish finish up uh, where you're at right now. Get get that little rim sewn all around and then um, set up your centro again, your machine and uh, grab your yarn and we will work on the tentacles. All right, so I finished it off. I trailed up through the bottom, up through the center here, and then I, I pulled it up through the center. And I'm gonna just, uh, oh, this is my fat needle, so it's not gonna work. I'm just going to, well, we're gonna make it work. Tie a knot here. I don't like to use this big needle for this kind of work because it's uh, it's hard to, uh, to work with. You need a smaller needle to tie knots, okay? Then I'm gonna go back down, pull it up, Pull that knot through. Do you see how when I pulled on it, it took the knot through? Um, then so then I have a nice finished edge. Okay, and then I've, there you go. We've got it. Now I've got. Uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine on this one, whereas I had seven on the other one. So there we go. We've got that hanging. We've got our little uh, rim done, and now we're going to make our tentacles so much fun can't wait to do these with you um so grab your machine grab your yarn and let's get started all right so we are going to do flat panel on this and we're going to use nine needles so we're going to bring our last white and our first black in line with our yarn guide again i always use the black one as my um, first needle so i'm going to go behind that first needle like i normally would and i'm going to cast on to nine stitches so behind and in front that's three four five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now after this ninth one, because I'm doing a flat panel, I have to put it underneath that little divider there. And then I'm going to put it into my yarn feeder. Okay. Now in order to, so that's going to be, that's going to count as row one. All right. So we're going to, we're going to crank our handle just so we go a little bit further. Oops. That was supposed to grab this one. That was supposed to grab that one. Okay. So we're going to crank, crank our needle until this one drops with that stitch, okay? So that is essentially two, Some maybe if you count this one, I guess that's three in front, okay? We haven't passed that one, so we passed two needles. Then we're gonna come back and we're gonna put a little bit of tension on our working yarn that's in the back here. And you're gonna see it's gonna come over this little divider and it's gonna drop down. And when it drops down, this needle will grab it just like that, I'm going very slow. See, it dropped down. Now that's our, our ninth needle knit and we're gonna keep going eight, seven, six, this is five, four, three, two, and one. Okay, so we've got nine needles done. That's row two, essentially. If I wanna use my row counter, I can, um, just like that. Um, but I, I'm not going to actually with this, but I, I will to start just to show you. But then now that we're underneath that first needle, we don't have stoppers for our our centrals like we do for our addies. So um, we have to, to, to watch for it. So that's easy to do too. So I'm just going to show you. You're going to keep cranking until you see this is the first needle. You want to look at that divider that's to the right of it. You want this yarn to drop underneath that divider. As soon as it drops under the divider, so that's essentially um, one, two, three needles it's taking to get to that one, then you can rotate back. And then it's going to go over that divider again, underneath the first needle, and complete the stitch. So if I'm counting, that's row three. Okay. Oh, this one's tight, so make sure that goes down over those two needles. And then we're going to keep going. So this is my last needle, my ninth, so watch the divider that's to the left of it. Okay, so we're going to go down. And when that yarn pops down underneath that divider, see it just dropped down underneath there, then you can go back. It's gonna go over that divider and that needle's gonna catch it. You wanna make sure that it's over your teeth and you're gonna go back, okay? The, you're gonna fight with the, with the first one and the last one until, until you get a few rows done here, um, until there's some weight on it, which is, you know, no problem. And then you're gonna go back, that's row four. Okay, so you're gonna go back until it drops down under that divider, and there it just did. So now I'm gonna put more tension on this back here. Make sure that this falls over the two um, pink needles there, and, or teeth, and then I'm gonna keep going. Watch it drop over this divider. 
there it just dropped so I can pull it a little bit tighter so that my my row going down is going to be nice and and uh, beautiful edged okay so I'm going to keep going helping this last one go down okay so now I've got to watch for the divider on that side of the needle okay when it goes down underneath that divider then you can come back and you don't have to go this slow. I'm doing this for the purpose of just showing you, okay? Um, once you get the hang of it, then you're going to watch that. Once once these two end um, ones start cooperating, then you'll get the end of it. You're going to just watch that divider. See it drop down, so I'm going to go back. I'm not even watching the needles over here. I'm just watching it as it goes over the divider. There, it went over, so I'm going to pull it a little snugger, and I'm going to keep going. Make sure that one drops down. Make sure the needle picks it up. When it goes over the divider, I can go back. Okay, give it a little snug pull, then go back. And I lost count, but I'll count the rows later. And I'm going to do 64 rows. So counting your, your cast on row, that's one, two. So right now I've done one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going to do five, six. And you're going to go until you get 64 rows done. When you get 64 rows done, making sure you pop that down until, you, um, until it starts going down on its own. And you can add some weights if you like. I have um, some clips that I will add. They're not in reachable distance, so I'm not going to go grab them right now. But, oops, that's caught on the little nook there. So I'm going to put that back underneath just because I want to make sure that it grabs. Oops, what did I do here? Forget what I'm doing now because I just was fixing something and uh, there we go. <laughs> And then it's going to pop down. So just pretend you never saw that last two seconds. It was just because I let it go when I was thinking about the clips, okay? So I don't want it to confuse you. That's going to pop down. It's going to come over that little divider. That needle's going to grab it. And we're going to continue on. Okay, pop that down over that last needle. Let it pick it up. When it goes down over the little divider, you can turn and go back the other way. And you keep going like that until you get 64 rows. Pop down, come back. See, now it's starting to go down on its own because there's a little bit of weight. Okay, and when, when you're going along along the row, you don't want much tension on your, on your yarn, okay? You don't want much tension at all. You want to just let it kind of feed itself. You can put it in the second tensioner if you want to, but, but I find that that... Um, just messes me up because when you get to this point where it's going over that divider and that needle catches it just like that you want to tug on it just a little bit so that you don't have big loops along the side of your of your work okay so that's that's how you're doing a flat panel and you're going to do that back and forth until you get 64 rows done and when i get there i'll come back and uh, meet up with you and i'll show you what you do next all right so go ahead have fun um and we'll see you when you're done Okay, so how did it go? <laughs> did you enjoy that? I, I think I'm having so much fun doing flat panels. I think that they are um, a lot of fun to do. Okay, so you're going to cut off a fairly long tail because you're going to need some for sewing as well. And so you're going to just wind it back to that first needle. Okay, we're going to thread our needle here. And we're going to do a long tail cast off. Okay, so let's just... Uh, Get this to go over those two teeth. There we go. And we're gonna back it up. I'm gonna take off that first stitch and the next one. And all of the all nine stitches. Okay, just like so. I'm loving this centro. This is one of my favorite machines actually, the 40 needle centro. Gotta go ahead so that I can get those over those teeth. I love all my machines, but I just love the size of this one. I love how smooth it, it works. It's just like a great machine and I'm really, really enjoying it. Okay, so we pull that off and we're gonna tighten that. And then I'm going to move my machine and I'm going to show you what we do next and grab a smaller needle um, for sewing. So you go ahead and do the same thing and I'll see you back and grab yourself, um, before, you, before you come back, grab yourself one of these little pipe cleaners. It doesn't matter what color um, you use. I've got them in all different colors. I just grabbed these to show you, but um, grab a pipe cleaner and uh, a smaller needle and come back and we're going to assemble. All right, so you're going to take your piece and as always, you're going to stretch it out lengthwise 
and widthwise. Now, making this video, I feel like there's so many <laughs> little things to do, um, but maybe um, when I watch it back after it's all edited and assembled, and maybe when you're watching, it's not going to seem like it's as as uh, so many little things as, as what it's feeling to me. But um, really, once you make one, you're going to sail through this and make, uh, make several in no time, okay? So I'm going to pull on that, pull it closed, and I'm going to just um, secure it with a little knot. So I'm going to now go to where I have the longest piece and I'm going to thread that through and I'm going to close off this this other end tightly as well just like so just in a simple knot because I'm going to tie it down and I'm going to grab a pipe cleaner I'm going to grab um, a white one but it really doesn't matter and so when you get your pipe cleaner I'm gonna move this camera down just a little bit when you have your pipe cleaner you are going to twist this end just in like this twist it in and give it another little twist just so that um, that sharp end is not poking out okay and that will hold because we're gonna put a stitch through it and then you're going to do the same thing on this other side you're gonna just give it a little turn just like that and then pinch it together just so it stays and that that you know honestly will be secure in itself just like that I'm confident of it but we will we will secure it a little bit as well so no no worries um, but now you see how this just automatically folds in on itself um, that's okay that's what we want actually you're gonna take this pipe cleaner and you're gonna put it in there you're just gonna set it in the middle just like so now it almost reaches the top, almost reaches the bottom. Don't go and add another one. Um, for me, I'm going to just, for some of them, I'm going to start it down at the bottom or at the top, whatever that's going to be. For others, I'm going to put it in the middle and I'm going to stagger it all around because I think then when I twist it um, in different directions, it's going to just make it look so much more unique from the other ones, okay? All right, so now that we've got that in there, we're going to begin sewing. So again, I like this curled edge because then, um, like I think it adds to the to the shape of this, but it also makes it easy for me to pick up the stitches that I want to join. So um, generally when I'm closing a, a, a blanket or, or something, I always tell you to have the fat part of the, the wide part of the stitch um, facing the same direction. So both of them would be facing up like that. Um, but in this case, I'm just going to let it, I'm just going to do it where it falls because it really, you know, it doesn't, it's not so important on, on something like this. So I'm going to go ahead and just tie this off here and I'm going to pick up two bars and then go over to this side, whichever, well, you know, I can go over here and then it's the same anyway. So and then I'm going to pick up two and I'm going to come all the way down. And if you kind of go off this line and you go over a stitch, seriously, for these this project, it's not as important. I mean, it's not as, as um, it wouldn't be as bad as what it would be if you're doing your blanket. So um, if, if you cross over to the next line by mistake, just keep going down. That's that's totally fine because we have the, um, the pipe cleaner in there. We're going to scrunch this up into funny shapes anyway. So you really, you really won't see that kind of a thing, but uh, as much as you can stay on the same row on both sides. But again, if, if you go off a bit, that's okay. All right. So we're going to pick up two bars on each side and keep going back and forth. So where I came out on this side, I'm going to go in, pick up two bars for those of you who haven't done the mattress stitch before. And where I came out on this side, I'm going to go in and pick up two bars. Then when I get a certain distance down, I'm just going to pinch the end like that and I'm going to pull on it and it closes it up nicely. Okay, so I'm going to work on down till we get to the to the pipe cleaner and then I'll show you what we do. But you know what? I, I realized that I, I um, forgot to tell you how many of these to make. Well, that's because you well, it's not because that I, I did forget, actually, <laughs> but you can um, make as many as, as you want to add. Just, you know, maybe start out with six and and uh, if you feel you need more, then add more. Um, for me, I, I made eight. I just made eight and threw them in my basket. And I don't I don't think I'm going to use all eight on one jellyfish, but I may, may not. Um, because I, I think that it's for a jelly, for, for an, if you were to do an octopus, of course, you're going to use the eight. But if you're going to do a jellyfish, it's nice to have a mixture of these wider ones and some smaller ones. So I went ahead and I, I did some... Um, I did some different yarn, like my Addy Egg hates this yarn, but but let me just grab. 
but so I grabbed three weight yarn in this color. I think it matches pretty good. And so I made a few of these and I just made it till I felt it was the, you know, a good length. I don't want them all the same length. I want some longer, some shorter. I, I made some of these green ones and I made some, um, some peach ones. Cause I thought that that might go to, well too, because there's some peach in this other one here. And, uh, and then I just might add some of them into there. Uh, if you don't have the Addy Egg, what you can do is um, just, in the, you know how you made this panel here with, with nine needles? Just make one with three needles. Um, and then it'll curl in on itself and don't even, don't even, um, don't even worry about sewing it, uh, it up like this. Just let it be. And then you can attach those and they will be a, a smaller um, tentacle that you can add in amongst the bigger ones and that'll look nice too, okay? Or you can just leave it with these and that is fine too and add as many as you like. Um, if you're just adding these, then you probably want to add seven or eight. Um, and, you know, that would be good. So now I'm down at my, at my pipe cleaner. So I'm going to just actually go into that. I, I put a little loop in there. So I'm going to go into that loop, pull it through, and then I'm going to go across, pick up my two bars, and I'm going to pull this closed. Okay, and then I'm going to just sew this over top, just like this. Okay, just to, just to give it some reinforcement. Okay, just like that. Okay, so I've connected that just so it's not going to slip down. And then I'm just going to continue on my merry way, just like I had done before. And when I get to the bottom where the other loop is from the pipe cleaner, I'm going to do the same thing. Okay, so you have a little bit of a nook in there, but that's okay because when we um, scrunch them all up or curl them or whatever, you don't see that. But it just keeps the pipe cleaner in place. Okay, so keep going all the way down. And when you get to the end, you're going to um, do the same thing. Catch the end of that pipe cleaner. Uh, then continue sewing down to the end and close it off. And then when you're done, that, come back and see me. All right, I made it to the end. Everything is secured and looking great. Okay, and so what I'm going to do is take these ends. I cut off the, the um, ends and I'm going to... Oh, that wasn't too tight there, but that's okay. I cut off the ends and I'm going to hide them because... For sewing them onto my jellyfish, I don't think that they're strong enough. I Like, I don't think that these individual um, pieces of yarn are strong enough to hold it. I mean, it will hold it, but you get a, a child playing with this, um, and it's going to, uh, it's going to, you know, possibly break. So I'm going to grab my worsted yarn, my worsted weight yarn, regular Craft Smart yarn, one that matches, and I'm going to attach a piece, just a little piece, to um, one of the ends of each of my each of my tentacles and I'm going to sew them onto the bottom just like that. That way I know that they're secure and they're not gonna break off. But see, we've got our, our lovely little tentacle here and you can like wrap it around your fingers like this to shape it and then it falls out like that or you can, you know, fold it in a zigzag like that. And then it looks like that or you can just, oh, whatever you wanna do, grab it and just, <laughs> scrunch it and that'll give you a tentacle <laughs> no don't do that you need to have a little more order than that okay but anyways you're going to shape all your tentacles and uh and then you're going to place them onto your the bottom of your um let me get them out of the way of your jellyfish okay so i i attached this then i sewed it on and I just sewed it across, okay? And now I'm gonna just tie it off and hide it under, then I'm gonna grab the next one. I'm going to add some yarn to the base, and I'm gonna just sew it on wherever I want, going through a couple layers. Don't just put it through this first layer, all that's gonna do is stretch. Get it down as far into as many layers as you can, and then let it hang and put them all over, okay? And so then when you do that, then if you decide you wanna add some thinner pieces, you can do that, or you can just leave them just leave them as is just randomly put don't, don't i i wouldn't say one here one an inch here one there i wouldn't do that i would just keep adding them until um until you're happy with how full it is and if you if you you need to add more than eight add more than eight if you need less than eight then you just eyeball it and do what you think works okay so go ahead and do that get those on and when you come back i will we will do the face together all right all right my little jellyfish loving friends <laughs> We got it all done. Um, I actually put all eight tentacles on and I, I think it's perfect. I love it. Um, now there were some um, 
ones that some of the um, pipe cleaner that are in the inside started poking out. So I just played with that and got it stuck in there. And, and I see there's one here too, but it kind of adds to the color um, that's that's there. So it's okay. But if you've got a big gap, um, like there was one where I had a little bit of a, of a gap. And so I just took um, some yarn and I just sewed that closed. Um, it's just that I had I had not um, done it properly when I went down. So go and inspect all your tentacles <laughs> and fix the ones that need to be fixed. But I added all eight um, to there. And you know what? I could add a few more if I wanted to, but I think this, this is perfect. I think that these eight um, are just the right amount uh, for this particular jellyfish. And uh, you know, again, you gotta go by what you think if you wanna add more. You go ahead and add more if you want to add some really thin ones, um, just this, just stringy ones without uh, without the um, pipe cleaner in them. You can do that. You just use your imagination and go from here. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put our face on. So um, grab your your um, black yarn and your needle, and then we will determine where and how we're going to place our face. Okay. So see you again real soon. All right, so I actually held it up by this little, I can't get it into the camera to do it because it's uh, just just because it's too long and stuff, but I actually held it up and where where it naturally fell to the front, that's where, because when you're when you're gonna hang this up on a little hook or whatever, you want you don't want the face to be turned sideways. So um, lift it up and hang it up that way and then find out where positioning your face would be the best, okay? So we're going to start with the side. We're gonna take it and we're going to come up and we're going to, I'm going to put my mouth centered on these, this little thing here. So I'm going to go down here, poke it up. Oops, <laughs> came right through. Yes, you'll see a cookie that's sitting there. If you uh, have cookies in your freezer or on your counter, pause the video, go get yourself one, why not? Have a cookie and let's, <laughs> let's continue together, okay? So I'm gonna go down and make a little tiny smile. So down into there. Come across, just like that. I'm not gonna pull it tight. Then I'm gonna go back into where I, um, that point there and then come up over here. And just nice and lightly put that down there. Then I'm going to go back down to this point and I'm gonna come up to where my first eye is going to be, which is going to be right just slightly above the, the mouth. Right there, it came off my needle, my yarn did, so I'm gonna have to go and fix that. But slightly above um, where the mouth is and right beside, okay? So that's what I'm gonna do there. And then I'm, all I'm gonna do is I'm going to just angle it slightly up, like just barely, but slightly up, okay? Just like that. And I'm going to go back and forth. Man, I'm missing my smaller needle. I love these wool needles, like I said, um, but, uh, my small one, both of my small ones broke, so I need to get a new one. New set. Then I'm going to go over to this side. So I did it three times, and I'm going to go over to this side. About there, I think. I'm going to pull that. There. Okay. And then I'm going to go just slightly up. You can't tell on this one. It looks like it evened out, but that's okay. Um... And I'm going to do this one three times as well. One. Two. <laughs> so cute. See, but I'm seeing, noticing that this one isn't far enough over, okay? So I'm actually going to pull that out and uh, redo it because I want it to be, I want it to be nicer than that, okay? So I'm going to pull this out. I can see my mistake actually, and I'll show you in one second. So easy to pull out when you're doing just a simple uh, face like this. Come on. Okay, so I'm gonna thread my needle again. I've got half a like a, just one bar in between the mouth and the and the um, and the eye, and I didn't do that over here. I put it, I lined it up right underneath. So I'm gonna just go over to to this place right here. And begin again okay and then I'm gonna go one I can already tell that's better 
and that's two. Oops. And one more time, but this time I'm going to take it in here and I'm going to come across underneath the stuffing over to this side, okay? But before I tie that off, I'm going to look and I'm going to see if I like that. <laughs> I think that's perfect. <laughs> I'm loving it. You want your eyes to be low on, on the head, so I, I <laughs> it looks so cute. Okay, I'm losing it here, but I love it. I think it looks adorable. I'm going to actually not have a little bar in between. I'm just going to, I'm going to cut this off so it's uh, easier to work with. I am going to then tie this into a knot. Because it's under the stuffing um, around the eye, it's not going to, it's not going to come loose. So I'm going to do that. Then I'm going to re-thread my needle. Just like so. And I'm going to go into that hole and out the back. Okay, and pull that, and then I'm going to just lift up on those stitches. Give that a little cut. And there we have our little jellyfish. <laughs> well, that deserves a bite of cookie. Mm. So good. Okay, so pardon my manners as I eat my cookie. <laughs> but there we have our beautiful little jellyfish. Oh, it's so adorable. I hope you love this making one for yourself or for gifts or for craft sales or for whatever. And uh, yeah, thanks for joining me on this tutorial. I always appreciate having you along with me. Um, if you haven't given my video a thumbs up, please do so because you know that means a lot to me if you do that. And if you haven't subscribed, please do that as well. And come on over to my Facebook group, Koala and It's and Knacks. And join in on the fun there if you haven't done that already. So again, thank you so much for joining me in this tutorial. I hope you had just as much fun as I did. Take care, my friends, and we'll see you next time.